Welcome to another episode of the 8-Bit Guy. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you the Koala Pad. Now, this is a really interesting peripheral from uh, 1983, and um, it's primarily used for designing artwork, but uh, really it's just a pointing device, and uh, I'm going to show you how it works. It was made for the Commodore 64, the Apple II, the IBM PC, and the Atari 8-bit line of computers. So this particular version is designed for the Commodore 64. Uh, so I thought in this episode I would use my Commodore 64C. It rarely gets much screen time. I'm usually showing the old bread box Commodore 64, but this one works just as well. In fact, I kind of like it better in some ways. When you open the box, you see that it comes with a pad, some books, and a cartridge for the Koala Painter software. This software was also available on floppy disk and cassette. I actually like the cartridge version because it loads immediately, but you'll still need a storage device if you want to save any of your work. Okay, so it's supposed to come with a stylus, but mine didn't have it. Now it's just a touch sensitive surface, so I'm just going to use the blunt end of a ballpoint pen and I think that'll work just fine. So when you put in the cartridge and then you power on the computer, you will see this neat little intro screen. It may not seem that impressive, but notice at the bottom that it was made in 1983. So this was actually pretty cool since the Commodore 64 was still in its infancy at this time and most of the software that really exploits its graphics capabilities didn't come out until several years later. Now you'll notice it starts drawing a little scene here. This is actually pretty neat. It's actually using its own polygon drawing routines in order to create a little scene based on some simple coordinates. These routines definitely aren't the fastest fill routines ever uh, compared to some of the C64 demos you see these days, but I tend to cut them a lot of slack again because we're talking 1983. So when you press one of the buttons on the pad, it will move to this menu. And you use the pad sort of like a mouse. Might I remind you, by the way, that the only computer for consumers that existed at that time that used a mouse pointer like this was the Apple Lisa, which cost as much as a brand new car. So uh, I'm going to draw something here, just a little something. Now um, what's interesting here is that they have a button called Oops, which I think is the first ever instance of an undo button I've ever seen. So let's try this again. Okay, so I created some abstract masterpiece here. Now let's see if I can fill it with some colors. Okay, I'll pick blue. Drop that in this place. Okay, so um, now let's pick yellow and try that. I suppose I should point out that this is using the Commodore's multi-color mode, which uh, I talked about in a previous episode. This allows up to four colors to be used inside of an 8x8 color cell. So as long as you don't try to put too many colors right next to each other, you can avoid the clashing. Now, what's interesting is that they have the main 16 colors up here in this section, but down below they have like some dithered colors with alternating pixels to kind of give a fake extra colors. Forgive my video capture device, it seems to have gone nuts with some interference here. Anyway, so here I can fill in one of these fake colors and it has kind of a textured look to it. So enough of my artwork, uh, let's go over and hit up the storage and let me see if I can show you some example artwork. So I have a disk in the floppy drive and it has 11 images on it. Uh, I just found this disk so I'm not sure where these came from. Anyway, I'm going to click get and then move the pointer up to invasion. Now this takes about 30 seconds to load from disk. Okay, so let's go back to the main menu and then back to the drawing screen. I'm not entirely sure what the idea was behind all the little boxes, but uh, these are some pretty good multicolor art pieces. Uh, let's go use the zoom function so we can get a close-up of some of the areas. This is how all of the pixel art was really drawn, pixel by pixel. You really have to give these artists a lot of respect for being able to create stuff like this. So naturally, I'm very curious as to how this thing works. So. I have a hunch that it uses the same pins on the joystick port that would be used by paddles. The C64 has two POT inputs on each port for a total of four. POT stands for potentiometer. This was originally intended for use with paddles like these. So I wanted to do a little test and so I plugged in my paddles. So if you want to read the register for the first POT input, you can use the PEAK command for memory location 54298. But to make this easier, I'm going to write a little basic program that will show me both of the POT registers on port one. Okay. 
Okay, so now I'm going to add a little go to command so that it will just keep repeating this command over and over again. Now, you can see there's some fluctuation in the numbers, but they're holding fairly steady. Now, you can watch as I rotate this paddle, you can see the numbers changing. So, now let's plug in the koala pad and keep running the same program. Sure enough, you can see the koala pad is definitely sending information on these pot registers, just like a paddle. So, it uses one register for the horizontal position and one for the vertical. One interesting little side note about the pot registers. So, if you look at the motherboard of the C64, the chips that read the joystick lines are the 6526 CIA chips. And they're the same ones that handle the keyboard and most of the input and output lines for the user port, disk drive, etc. But the pot lines are actually handled by the SID chip. That's right, the chip that gives the Commodore 64 its unique musical sound is the same chip that makes the Koala Pad possible. Okay, so I guess we better take this thing apart so we can see what's inside. Uh-oh, looks like we've run into one of those screws hidden under the warranty sticker. I guess I'm going to have to avoid the warranty. Okay, so let's take the top off and then the two buttons. Now we can remove the pad. It's pretty simple looking, but there's a circuit board in here. I'll be honest, I have no idea what these different integrated circuits are for. Here are the little momentary switches for the buttons. And I do see a date code here uh, that this one was manufactured in February of 1984. Also, the Koala Pad will work in Geos as a pointing device. Uh, that's a graphical operating system that came out for the Commodore 64 in 1986, about three years after the Koala Pad came out. So there were a handful of other third-party applications that also supported the Koala Pad. And this is a really neat piece of computer history because a lot of the early games uh, they use these to design the graphics that you see in those games. And, um, you know, I also love the innovation, not only of the tablet, but of the software itself. Because, again, we're talking about a pointer-driven operating system. Well, I don't know if operating system is the right word, but at least a pointer, point-and-click driven application in 1983. And most computers didn't start seeing that type of thing until many years afterwards. I've also collected a variety of other interesting peripherals from the time period, and I'll be showing you those in upcoming episodes. So stick around for those, and thanks for watching.